Good morning all. It's the 29th of December uh, 2015. This might be possibly the last video I make this year so I thought I'd do uh, one to camera. I don't do these videos to camera very often because uh, well fundamentally I believe that what's on my bench is probably more interesting than this. Uh, also the front camera on my Nexus 4 is a low resolution camera so you'll probably find that this is uh, a lower resolution image than the, the normal ones I take with the rear camera. Um, now this might also be the very last video I ever make with the Nexus 4. This is actually my wife's Nexus 4. She gave it to me as a Christmas present. That's nice, isn't it? Um, but I've since discovered that um, this is 16 gig. The one I'm filming on is 32 gig and I often fill it up with some some of my longer videos. Uh, also this one I think is locked to O2 which is a bit of a nuisance because I'm on EE. So I might be retiring the Nexus 4 in favour of this. I just went down literally this morning to PC World and bought this Nikon S9900 um, and what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to unbox this. I'll do an unboxing video on my other channel, my reviews channel. Have you seen my reviews channel? Here's a link uh, if to, to a video on my reviews channel if you've not already seen that. And then when I've got this unboxed, I'll put it on the bench and I'll explain a little bit about why I chose this one. Uh, price obviously was a big factor. Um, and uh, muse on whether or not this is the ultimate uh, YouTuber's camera. Of course, I've been looking for a camera for doing my YouTube videos for probably about a year now and if you go on YouTube and put in you know the best YouTubers camera you get all sorts of recommendations but of course mainly they're for the to camera work the selfie stuff you know the walking around and being pretty well I want something that I can uh, use to shoot the bench so it needs to have certain things like really good macro uh, wide angle lens this has got a completely mental 30 time zoom <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to use the 30 times zoom, but there may be other features of this that I will use. So I'll be back in a while, uh, in just a few seconds, actually, after I've done my unboxing to uh, to look at this on the bench. Well, here it is. And uh, I can say straight away that what attracted me to this, um, other than price, and price, of course, was very important, is this three inch fully articulating LCD so you can flip that round put it on the back of the camera uh, as an LCD screen that regular compact cameras would have fixed but of course it means that I can work with this uh, turned out rotated nine, 90 degrees that way and 180 degrees that way it's quite a flexible um, screen so that I can always see the screen irrespective of which way the camera is angled uh, it's fairly thin, about four centimeters on my mat, but switch it on and the three section lens comes out. It plays a silly tune as well. Zoom in and the lens grows to this quite uh, preposterous length, uh, 30 times zoom. It's really quite amazing. Now, something else I wanted uh, for when I'm doing my roving reports, wandering around the garden, for example, is image stabilization. I mean, you can see quite clearly that my phone doesn't have any of that. So let's see what the image stabilization on the camera is like. So the image stabilization on the camera appears to be on because there's like a hand shaking thing there. Um, if I do little shakes, you can see that the, the camera is shaking because you can see that because the phone doesn't have image stabilization. <laughs> this is quite hard to get across really. But look at the way the grid and the LCD seem pretty well locked. So that looks like quite impressive image stabilization. And I've read some reviews and they do say that this one has quite a good one. Now it also has um, object tracking in the autofocus. If I press OK to start it, it's locked onto that plug there. And you can see that it tries to track that object if I move the camera around. But I am concerned that this only works for uh, still images. I'm not sure that this works in video, which is a real shame because object tracking would be incredibly useful, uh, you know, if I'm holding an object and moving it around, because often the phone just loses autofocus 
um, but uh, it remains to be seen whether this has better autofocus than the phone. Now there's only one way to find out whether this uh, camera is going to have a good image and of course good sound, that's the other thing. Um, that's the movie button there, the red one, and that's to record a movie, so this is a movie recording. I think what I'll do is I'll go outside and point it at my solar panels, just to take a short clip. It's only going to record um, 30 seconds or so of video because I've got no card in it, but it does seem to have some internal RAM, so well, let's give that a try. So, first video shot on my new camera. I actually have some sun today on the solar panel, so my battery will be charging up. Now, what's this image stabilization like? Obviously, if I waggle it a lot, it moves around, but it does seem pretty stable if I don't do that. Uh, what's the audio like? What's the color like? What's everything like? Now, the way my setup works is that I've got this microphone boom arm and then this uh, tripod head, which is actually upside down, uh, it's got the ability to pan. And then there's a, a mobile phone holder and my Nexus 4 sits there. Now this camera, of course, is going to have to sit on this arrangement, hanging from this uh, system. But the camera is going to be upside down. Well, now the first thing I've noticed is that the camera is quite heavy. Uh, so the boom arm doesn't really want to stay up. It keeps drifting down. So I might have to invest in a better microphone boom arm. I mean, this one was very cheap. It was only £7.50. Now, although the image on the back of the camera looks the right way up, of course, all the... Uh, oh, switched it off. Switch it back on. All the on-screen stuff is upside down. This camera, I think, is supposed to have um, orientation sensor. So I just shot this. So if I take a video of this, for example, um, this is the right way up. I suppose I'll have to get some writing in if it's uh, really the right way up. Is the recorded video going to be the right way up? Well, it doesn't look like it, does it? It looks like it's upside down. Now, is that going to be a pain? Does that mean I'm going to have to uh, invert every image I shoot with the camera when it's in its upside down mode? It'd be a nuisance if I did. And of course, that's the good thing about phones. Phones have an orientation sensor, so they know which way up they are. So you can see there the camera symbol is that way up. If I turn the phone over, it knows it's been turned over. And the camera symbol, where's that item on my desk over here somewhere? The camera symbol uh, changes to, to, to correspond with that. Um, that's a phone, but it seems that uh, I can't find a camera that has that same facility to be used upside down. I mean, maybe it's a bit weird using a camera upside down. So maybe the whole notion of having this uh, camera upside down is fundamentally flawed, and I'm gonna to have to find some other method of attaching the camera to this bracket with perhaps an extension bracket that allows the camera to be uh, the right way up. I'll have to look at what's available from the camera suppliers, I think. So, a few teething problems perhaps, or perhaps I fundamentally misjudged this and this camera will end up just being for my holiday snaps. Um, I do ha actually have a plan to uh, possibly open another YouTube channel all about photography, so it certainly could be useful for that. But we'll have to persevere with that and see how it goes. So, a new year, uh, a new camera, and uh, I have a New Year's resolution. I can't tell you what that is because it contains an expletive. Cheerio.